Okay, so now we've got the mirrors aligned uh, and the, the laser itself. So what I want to do now is find out where the focal point is on the laser. Now there's a two inch lens in there which is uh, 50.8 millimeters. Now, so 50.8 millimeters. The lens, the bottom of the lens is about a millimeter or so, but two millimeters actually up in there. So from the underside of that to the, the actual bed, that is approximately the right um, distance to be perfectly um, focused. But uh, I want to check to see what the focal distance is. In other words, the workable distance um, of the focused beam. Okay, so we've got Inkscape open now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose a line. I'm going to start here at the 50 and go to 150. Thereabouts, it's just just roughly. And then I'm going to come here to stroke paint. I'm going to cut out of it. This just represents red, green and blue. Um, so we want to cut so we want it 100% red. And we're going to go to stroke style and we're going to raise this up to about a millimeter. Like that. And now we can see it. It looks just fine. There it is. Um, so now, now we've got that as a, a red line, about a hundred millimeters long. We're going to go over here to File, Document Properties. Uh, ensure that millimeters are selected and uh, we're going to make it a bit smaller because this is uh, A4 size at the moment it's just going to take up too much memory so I'm going to bring it down to something um, let's go landscape first off and then bring it down to something quite small something like a this one here I think that'll do and we're going to position this in our piece of work um, it's somewhere in here you can actually zo uh, reduce it to the size of the actual object but uh, this is okay for what I want to do at the moment so there it is in that little box I'm, I'm happy with that so we're going to go up here to file and then save as and we're going to save it to PC desktop and we're going to name this um, test one which it is uh, Inkscape SVG file and save so now we're going to start uh, K40 Whisperer which is up uh, I'm going to start the laser and initialize the laser Initialize the laser, then open the file, desktop, where is it, there it is, there, test one, open. And there it is. Uh, probably could have been a bit straighter, but it's okay. 
Uh, so now I'm going to bring the camera down to the inside of the laser and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm just going to lift this out to reveal the clamp. Um, now, well, so what I'm going to do, because I need to find out what the where the focal length is or what the focal length is uh, and that is the area uh, in, in distance from the underside of the lens that is usable. So what I'm going to do is open this for want of a better word clamp. This is just a piece of uh, hardboard that's white on one side. Put it in at an angle and just Make, you know, sort of clamp it there. That's the. <laughs> it's the. the uh, this is the best purpose I found for this clamp so far. So then, what I'm going to do is jog this over, and I want to start about this area, and we're going to run that line, which is 100 millimeters long, from here up, and we're going to find the the narrowest part of the beam cut in this white material. Um, let me just get my ruler. Um, now I'm just going to jog this over a bit. A lot. I just want to measure a hundred. Uh, we can come over that way a little bit. So it's going to start about here and come to about and finish about there. And I think I'll take it back that way a little bit because I could do a couple of runs. That'll be all right. I want to get a couple of runs out of this. So I'm going to select. Uh, let me see. I've just turned the selector up to about 10 milliamps. Uh, actually, I might take it to about 12. I don't want to actually cut through this. I'm just after a line. So. Let's see, let's let's run this. I'll zoom you in a bit. So here we go. Uh, I'm running at uh, 10 millimeters per second. Let's see what happens. You can see the rooster tail there. Yeah, I'm just going to move uh, 10 millimeters. Oh, let me have a look. Let's, let's, let's examine that, shall we? Let's have a look. Okay, so looking at that, the usable length is from about there to about there. Although it's very, very fine, you know. So I'm going to run that again. Um, not so much power. I want a bit of a more defined line there. Okay, not so much power this time. Let's try it again. Got a good old rooster tail going there. I think we can cut the power back even further actually. 
I'm just going to raise the speed up a little. I'll leave it at the same power setting, which is about, just about 10 milliamps. So I'm going to raise up now to about 15, 15 millimeters per second. And we're going to cut again. Here we go. I'm going to come over again, I'm going to raise the speed up even further. This is now 20 seconds per... This is now 20 millimeters per second. Here we go again. I'm going to do it again over another 10 millimeters over this way and I'm going to do oh, I'm going to go 30 millimeters per second here we go cut in now ok it actually works out that our working focal uh, point then is actually the surface of this material. Um, and really the focal depth then, usable depth, is from the, the top of the bed about, let me see, not very far. It's actually about three millimeters above, which is about eighth of an inch, and about three millimeters below. So the total focal um, distance, the usable distance, is about six millimeters. So it's three millimeter above the height of, of this um, bed and three millimeters below. That's a very useful thing to to know. So they've actually got this clamping mechanism in the optimum point, I suppose. Okay, so, well, let's cut something out, I suppose. Okay, so what I've done is I've just drawn a simple two-inch square and I'm going to pop this piece of just a eighth-inch flyboard in here. Oop, I don't know how to get it in here without pinching me. Okay, I've got that piece of material now just there, so I'm going to uh, position the head somewhere here. I'm just going to do a test a little bit further over this person. Okay, so we know where it is. Um, so I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit to that localised area. So what I'm looking for here is how it cuts and how much uh, flame, smoke and debris 
actually comes off the material and how good this uh, extraction unit is actually working. Um, so I'm going to give it... Okay, so I've turned it up to approximately 15 milliamps. Um, I'm going to set the, the cut speed at about 8 millimeters per second just to try it. And I'm looking for a clean cut. I'm looking for it to fall out. Well, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to initiate the cut now. of smoke coming up, a little bit going out at the bottom, got a bit of flame, of course the flame is uh, uh, the debris, smoke uh, ignited. This is not a good thing to have flame like this. Well it cut it out. Well that astonishes me, it just cut it out without thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to up the speed a bit. Okay, so let's run this now. It's uh, set at 12 millimeters per second. Yeah, a lot of smoke coming up, but it cut it out. Not bad at all. Uh, let's go to 14 millimeters per second now. Okay, so the result was, and what we're looking for is the cleanest cut we can get for the power and speed. So this was the first one at 10 millimeters per second at 15 milliamps a little bit of muck on the underside not much this is the underside by the way but it clean it cleanly cut it through but um, the material is quite dark so 12 millimeters per second not much difference between them except they cut a little bit quicker at 14, you'll, you'll find now we're starting to get quite a bit lighter. Now this is what you're after. Now you, you see a lot of people using these um, laser cutting machines. And this is all burnt, charred, black. That is not the way to do it. The way to do it is to use the power and speed in such a way that it leaves you a nice clean cut. That is a nice clean cut. I dare say it might go to 15 millimeters per second uh, and I dare say it would cut slightly thicker material too. That's eighth inch. Pine. That, that is eighth inch of uh, see three ply something like that. Softwood ply but they did, they did a very, very good job. So what have we learnt today? Well, what I've learnt is straight out of the box, um, my particular machine, my 40 watt laser, basically didn't work because the laser tube itself was not in the correct orientation uh, so I reorientated the laser um, I've adjusted all the mirrors up now so they're all as perfect as I can get them 
uh, and in line and we've just done our first test cut and I don't mind telling you once you've got it right once you've got everything in line it does a pretty damn good job I, it, I'm surprised I'm really surprised that last cut is a nice cut I wasn't expecting it to actually perform as nice as that but it is however excuse the parrots by the way as they're feeding down right there I think However, um, we can do an awful lot better with this machine. We can make it perform a lot better. And over the last few days, I've been receiving uh, things that I have uh, purchased from eBay and Amazon, uh, which is you know both fairly good uh, resources for, shall we say, parts to upgrade this so I'll just fetch a couple now so the first thing we're going to do is replace that uh, nozzle with this now this one is an air assist nozzle very important actually because what the air assist does it not only, should we say, blows the debris out of the cut uh, and stops it bursting into flames. Um, another reason for having this is to stop you destroying your lens. Because what it actually does is it blows air in underneath the lens. It circulates and then comes out. It keeps the lens cool and it keeps it clean. So that is a, a must. And of course, alongside this, you need one of these. <laughs> this is a little impulse compressor. It's only a very small one. Uh, I'm not sure how many litres per minute. Um, 40, no, what am I talking about? About 60 litres per minute of air under pressure, which is enough for this little uh, machine. And then the next thing we're going to do is improve the airflow. Okay, they've gone part way there by replacing that big, horrible square box affair fan they used to use on the back. This one that's been fitted now is a lot better and it's quite powerful but it's still not powerful enough so we're going to fit one of these and it's not a jet engine <laughs> although it operates like one you've got a fan you've got an intake fan there and another fan in there and um yeah, this 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 will push air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the two of these fans, you know, together. In other words, use that fan in this uh, unit, and then use this one in the line, uh, which will really move some air. Uh, which is what you're after. I'm actually going to cut this back. Um, to reveal well it, it's it's acting like a choke yeah uh, and it's choking the airflow up um it is better they, they have improved it but i think we can improve it even more so the next video is going to consist of uh, doing some of these upgrades to make this 
a really useful little tool in my workshop. So, if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to consider becoming a patron to the channel, because it's the patrons behind this channel that keeps it going. Uh, without the patrons, I probably could not do what I do. So please consider that. And uh, come and have a look at one of my other videos on... Well, the list is getting quite big now, because there's nearly 600 videos. Uh, CNC routing, CNC milling, CNC lathe, uh, big 100 watt laser, now this one, wood turning, all this goes on. So, thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye now.